think um, team MVP, Alex Mastromano, you know, um, just flipping the field and just what he did, you know, with different variations of punts, get the, you know, make sure you got a couple, I think, pins out of 10. I think four of them inside the 20, and then there's one that he was backed up all the way up. So just, he had different, um, you know, kicking things he had to do in that game, but just talk about his game overall. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think Alex did a tremendous job. He was certainly a critical uh, factor in us winning that game. Uh, our ability to control the field position, his ability to uh, pin them uh, and pin them deep and, and create bad field position. Um, it started early in the game, and he and he kind of kept it up throughout the course of the game. Really negated their opportunity to return any kicks, except for the one that that we were uh, backed up in the end zone. Um, so I thought I thought he did a tremendous job. You know, I think uh, you know the great thing about it and the cool thing is um, that his teammates, you know, they all recognize it too. You know, he's one of the guys that. Um, you know, help break the rock on on Saturday night. And I think it just speaks to to you know how he's grown in the program and and the respect for that his teammates have for him and and what an impactful day that he really had. Jordan. Coach, with the onside kick, did you know about it going into the game. How did you think the execution was? I mean, it looked like it was just one bounce away from falling into your arms. Um, you know, early in the week, um, you know that was part of the game plan. Um, you know, we, we were going to use it in the game. Um, you know, if we if if we had uh, won or won the toss and we had deferred to the to the second half, we probably would have used it in the first half. And um, you know, with them winning the toss and deferring and, and us kicking off to start the second half, that's when we thought the best opportunity was to use it. It was always part of the plan, um, and it had nothing to do with with how the game was was flowing at that point in time. It was just uh, part of the plan. It was something that was there. Um, our guys executed it well. The, we didn't get, you know, they, the ball took a little bit of a high hop and, and it gave them an opportunity to react to it. But, um, you know, I, th I think it was the right call and we would 100% do it again um, if given the opportunity based on the look that we were provided. On Keon's punt return, that set up the score. Can you talk about what the other 10 guys on that play did beyond Keon? Yeah, you know, for, for a guy to, to be able to make a play, you know, you certainly need uh, guys giving great effort and blocking. I thought there were some really, really key blocks. But one of the ones I do want to point out on that one was from uh, Dre Jacobs. He's not a, a starter on the punt return unit. Um, as a matter of fact, that was the first play he'd ever played in a return, uh, return unit setting. But... Um, he he kind of got beat off the line of scrimmage. Uh, we, he was really put in a position that that you know he wasn't accustomed to, to be playing, but because of some injury, we needed to put him in. And he did a, a phenomenal job recovering, just showing great effort. And he was really the one after Kia made the first um, the first guy down miss. He was really the one that sprung it and turned it into a big play. So um, you know I thought he did a tremendous job. But really, when you look across the board, there was a bunch of guys on that return that did a really nice job. Um, and I think. What you do see from our team is a great, uh, a great buy-in, a great excitement um, to what is happening in the, with the return units. And I really believe that every time we take the field, they think that they're going to go make a play. I can tell by just the way that they take the field that uh, they're excited about the opportunity. And it's starting to reflect um, in almost, almost every game there's been an opportunity, um, especially the second half of the year, to, to bring one back. And that was a critical play in the game. Two micro questions. Uh, the first one is: Is that just how their punter punts? Is that uh, kind of just trying to keep it away from the return guy? And then also, and what challenges does that present? And then also, um, they've got an explosive kick return guy that you guys really did a good job on. How well that that unit performed? Yeah. So, uh, in terms of their punter, he is a, he is also you know he's a role punter, um, an Aussie kid uh, who does have really good ability to control the ball. They were probably uh, I think statistically going into the game about 33 percent cross kick, which means roll to your right, kick it back across the field. Um, and the other two thirds obviously were more traditional roll punts. Um, against us, I think there was a there was certainly a concerted effort to try to keep the ball out of Keon's hands. I think Keon got you know did a great job of, of fielding all the kicks that he could. Um, you know obviously we had the one the one muff that we'd like to have back but but trying to get to all the balls that he could. Um, but yeah, he, he's a, he's he's a good player for them, and, and he's a weapon. In terms of their uh, returner, I thought he was a really good player going into it. I still feel like he's a really good player coming out of it. Um, but I thought our guys really um, 
really did a good job in terms of, of executing what we what we asked them to do and then playing with great effort on the cover units. I mean, we for for them to for our, for us to be able to cover the the two that they brought out as well as we did, I thought was was just a great job by our guys and um, you know I was proud of their effort and how they, they approached it. Had Van Dravius practiced being that? You you said he hadn't done it in a game, but he had practiced that, right? He had. He, he was our uh, he's he's he was the backup to one of the other guys in terms of, of that position. Was he ready immediately when he, when he realized? Because there have been other teams that maybe haven't been ready immediately and had 10 guys on the field for something like that. But he knew somebody communicated with him right away, Van Drabius, you got to go. Yeah, so we, the, our training staff does a really, really good job of, of keeping us immediately updated in terms of, of the status of different players. So, uh, and then we have you know our strength staff and, and people on the sideline who do a great job with, with helping manage the personnel on our special team. So a uh, long-winded answer to your question is uh, immediately when the injury occurred, everywhere that that player is on the depth chart, we were able to get his his backup into the game, and uh, you know Dre was was one of those guys. And then three for one, the final third. Uh, Keon drops the one. Did he drop it or muff it? I didn't see what happened, but I guess the overall, the bigger overarching question is, a lot of kids maybe lose a little confidence when something like that happens. When he almost has a devastating turnover, that kid just goes yeah. and fields the next one, and wants to go score a touchdown. Yeah, I don't think that phased him at all. Um, and, and I think I think too, like I, I think. The style in which we coach is is also a benefit in, in some of that regard because, you know, when when things like that happen, our my thought process always is like, well, he didn't he didn't mean to, that's not what he was intending to do. So let's just go correct it. There's no reason to carry on. And I, like, and um, I don't think it, you know that didn't phase him a bit. You know, he was going to go out and he's going to field the next one. And to be honest with you, it didn't phase me a bit because I was a hundred percent confident that he was going to go out and field the next one. Um, but that's the type of person he is, that's the type of player he is, and I think that's why um, you know, he's having the season that he's having. Deloach is obviously having a lot of success getting after the quarterback. Um, after the game in the press conference, like Akeem Dent was like mad. He thought he had three sacks and he only got credit for two. And like, how much have you seen the other guys? Because a lot of guys have to be unselfish to create those opportunities for him. Um, uh, how, how has that developed over the year? Well, you know, I think, you know, D'Lo has a great feel and, uh, you know, especially for, for those add-in kind of sacks that he's had. You know, he's, obviously you have the, the pressures where he's part of the blitz. And I think he's a really good blitzer, so I think when he has those opportunities, he, he does take advantage of them. And then the other type of sack that he's really had, uh, you know, quite a few of is where he's a late add into the pass rush. And, um, you know, I think, I think that's a, a product of a lot of backs are staying in to be extra blockers in terms of protection. Um, and if he's the one who's responsible for covering the back, he has that opportunity to add in. And, um, you know, I think he just has a real good feel, good patience for it. When he sees things open up and develop, uh, he's able to go make a play. But I don't, I don't know exactly the number, but I think that's six or seven sacks that he has on the air. And, you know, that's, that's a big number for a linebacker, especially, um, you know, for a team like us that doesn't, Blitz him a ton. I mean, he pressures you know some, but it's not it's not like it's it's a uh, let's focus on ways just to bring him in pressures. Um, and he's just done a really good job. In the first half, it looked like defensive ends were rushing too far up the field and giving up massive rush lanes. In the second half, there was a big improvement from the entire defense in the running in the running game. Can you talk about some of that improvement and what you saw from the defensive ends? Yeah, you know, I think uh, you know some of the things that that Miami was doing uh, schematically in the run game. I thought was probably you know pretty well thought out in terms of how they were trying to get our guys to get up the field a little bit. Um, you know, once we got a, a better feel for what we were seeing, I thought I thought we adjusted well. Uh, that's one thing I do think our, our team does an exceptional job of is, is making those adjustments and then being able to go out and execute them. Um, you know, I thought we played a lot tighter, um, a lot. Uh, a lot more, um, you know, fundamentally sound in the run game um, in the second half, and I think that that obviously showed up. Anything else? All right. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, guys.